we're, we're asking dumb uh, SEO questions. Uh, each week uh, we meet to answer the questions asked on the uh, dumb SEO questions uh, community on Google+. Plus. Um, with us tonight we have uh, Alistair Lattimore. Uh, Alistair uh, is a Senior SEO Manager for the What If Group. Uh, he's based uh, here in Australia. We have uh, David Rosam. Um, uh, I hope Dan doesn't shoot me for not mentioning him. Um, it's just he's the best programmer in the world and I don't want to lose him. Um, and uh, <coughs> um, Anyway, David Rosam uh, is a, is a uh, SEO copywriter with 30 years experience, 10 of it uh, um, uh, in SEO on, on the web. Um, Michael Fischer-Kirchner is a uh, senior um, SEO manager for Zazzle.com, purveyors of 32 million products. They still don't know how to do it right, but they're working on it. Um, <laughs> uh, Rob Mars is uh, an AdWords aficionado. Um, he um, is based in, in, in the Netherlands and um, he um, uh, has a web website, uh, marketbiz.nl. Uh, uh, Tim Kappa, um, recently back from Special Ops uh, in uh, Africa, um, is uh, a conversion rate optimization specialist, um, a search engine optimizer. Um, he's based in um, uh, the backwoods of London. Uh, Midlands, I'm sorry, Midlands. Okay. All right, um, let me uh, try and get this happening. I, I'll probably muck it up for sure, but let, let's see. But we're testing out in a new uh, uh, prompter so that um, um, you watching it will be able to um, read our questions as well. Let's uh, hope it works. The, th the theory uh, is. Uh, the theory is, in theory, it's supposed to work. Anyway, first question is, uh, um, from an SEO perspective, um, would I be better off uh, paying a photographer to do a, a My Business video and then have someone uh, embed uh, a video into a website, or should I just subscribe to business.com? It's from um, Stephen Sicantelli, uh, our good friend from uh, Florida. He runs a Braxy Taxi. I don't know what um, business.com do, but they're basically a directory. Oh, okay. Well, I would say that he's probably better off in general paying a photographer um, or a videographer to do it for him. That way he can use the uh, photos and videos any way he likes. Um, he'll probably find that there's other business directories um, in his area of the world that might allow him to upload um, photos and videos. Uh, if he does them through business.com, depending on the licensing that they have, he may not actually own um, the video. They, they might own the copyright to that video footage, for instance, and they won't give him the raw files. So by getting it done himself, um, he, he could do what he wants with them. He could use them in YouTube ads or, um, you know, there's a whole raft of things that he might want to do with those video files. Anybody else? Okay, um, Mike, there, um, I, I apologise, but uh, I, I, I locked the order of the, question, of the questions, um, so uh, um, it may not uh, suit you, uh, but I'm sorry. Um, here's a question from um, uh, Jenny Gomes. Um, she says, I have a 100% uh, bounce rate uh, from um, uh, direct traffic in analytics. Um, she says, hi to all, uh, I'm having an issue, I hope you guys uh, will help me out. I'm having a 100% uh, bounce rate from direct traffic and analytics but not getting the reason behind it. 
Um, will you guys please help me to understand um, what are the possible causes? Well, could be bad, uh, bad bots. <coughs> Um, this could be, and by bad bots, those are the ones that run JavaScript, um, people who might be scraping your site. It could be of an accident where uh, you have a um, kind of like uh, a, a, a site that, uh, or a bot that's pinging you, that you've installed to ping you to make sure the server is up. And so that runs JavaScript, so that's something you can do against yourself. Um, and so uh, there's a couple of those types of things. Um, you could have installed the script, the, the say some type of code. I'm not sure if you, you're in Google Analytics, I'm going to assume so. Um, you could have installed it more than once, and so that's creating some issues. Um, or rather, I should say on the flip side, you're actually missing the script on certain pages. So uh, let's say you have it on the home page and you forgot to put it on the subsequent pages. So. Uh, as far as it looks like, it looks like they're bouncing when they're hitting the, when they're actually hitting the secondary page. Could be you forgot them on the subdomain. Um, so, in, and it may not just be the direct traffic site. Yeah, I don't want to try to only assume that. But generally, the the most common theme when you see 100% bounce rate um, is going to, from a direct traffic in particular, is going to be due to some kind of bot. Um, now, as you're scrolling, let's see what else is here. Uh, I, think, yeah, I, um, would, yeah. I would look in your the, the technology section on your analytics to see who's sending what. Um, and then you can identify kind of a bot by if you see 100% bounce rate with zero, 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 zero time on site. And that is your general indication of, of a bad bot there. Um, and you can add a filter to actually filter out those. Um, Ooh, don't forget your own IP. Um, depending on how large your site is, if, if it's, or rather, how small your site is. <clears throat> if you didn't filter out your own IP, you're, there's a good likelihood you're potentially doing the bounce rate. I think one of the things here, though, is that um, if it's at 100% and um, Jenny's getting some normal traffic to her site as well, um, then even the bot scenario probably, while it could contribute, probably isn't going to be the issue because if she's got any normal visitor coming to her site, she's invariably they're going to click at least once, right? Someone is going to click to a second page. So as soon as she's got one person clicking to another page, she's no longer got 100%. It'll be 99 point something, for instance, right? So well, it depends on how much the right rate is, but yeah. Coming to the page, then, more than likely, it probably indicates a tagging issue. If, it, if, if she knows that she's got some reasonable amount of traffic per week, per month, for instance, coming to this page, and it's still 100%, and she knows that the traffic is coming from a variety of sources, like... Um, AdWords and organic traffic and some referrals and some email. You know, there's a bit of a mixture of various traffic types and some rogue bots as well. And it's still at 100%. It's going to be a tagging problem. Excellent, guys. Um, all right. Uh, look, I'm, I'm going to call this question uh, answered. Um, I just want to point out that uh, what's showing on the screen now are, are the comments from the SEO questions community uh, on Google+, Plus, um, as well as our uh, esteemed panel who uh, donate uh, um, their time to be here every Thursday. Um, we have, uh, uh, I'd say, scores if not hundreds of uh, um, heroes that um, uh, Answer the questions um, during during the week prior to uh, our hangout, and um, so uh, at the end of uh, each question, I'm going to um, um, put this on the screen so that if anybody uh, is watching the video, they can actually pause the screen and uh, read it and keep up. Okay.
So uh, our uh, next question, uh, I knew I'd muck this up. Oh, God. It's all right, I had my coffee in the way and I couldn't get my mouse back. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. It was hungry for coffee. I tell you, I, 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 I must have done something terribly wrong one day um, because I'm certainly paying for it now. Uh, our next uh, question is uh, from uh, Maria Hayes. Um, I titled this question uh, Imminent um, Train Wreck because I couldn't think of any other way to describe it. Um, uh, Maria uh, says, uh, hi everybody, I need your help. I'm working on a new site for my client um, and unfortunately my client wants to do everything at once. So if we are looking at the uh, following steps. One, a new web design. Two, a completely reorganizing content structure of pages. Three, a new URL structure uh, from www.domain.com. Um, 2010, you can see it on your screen, um, to www.domain.com blog post title. Four, um, adding content from a third domain to the new domain, which has several languages, so the URLs are language specific. Um, I won't read it out, um, but you can see it there. And she goes on to say, I'm trying to figure out how to set up a 301 redirect for all of that. I think because of the complexity, I will have to do it uh, in HT Access file. But can I do that with many changes uh, all at once? Um, I've seen code to re redirect from www.olddomain.com to www.newdomain.com or from www.olddomain.com and 2012.10.20 slash blog, etc. to www.olddomain.com slash blog hyphen blog hyphen title and so on but not for all of these cases can I just add uh, all of those 301 redirect rules uh, in the same uh, HT access file uh, do I have to do it manually there are about 60 pages um, and 400 blog posts on one domain and another 100 pages and 50 plus of plus 50 blog posts on the uh, multi-language uh, domain. I'm looking forward to your input and help with this one. Thanks so much in advance. This is a blinder. So, <laughs> um, you agree with my title, Ale Alistair? Yep. This is, um, this is the highest risk prospect that uh, Maria's client could possibly embark on. Um, and uh, for anyone other than an experienced um, person that's done this quite a number of times, I would pretty much warn everyone away from going down this approach, and so does Google. Uh, the likelihood of you getting it right, if you don't have the resources and the good testing, you're nearly guaranteed to make a meal of it. it, it it's just fraught with risk. Um, you're far better off doing this in um, two or three stages. Like roll out the new web design, for instance, step one, make sure the design is performing um, at least as good as the existing um, design in terms of conversion that the client's getting. Um, so cross that one off your list. Um, then potentially in one hit, um, you could bring in uh, new content and new URLs in one go for instance, um, but I definitely wouldn't do all four of those steps in one go. I, I, it's not a good decision. In terms of the, um, the second part of her question is, can I put all this stuff in the HD access? Um, yes, absolutely. Um, you could put thousands of directives inside a HD access file, um, and assuming the regex that you use for the redirects is efficient, and you're going to be doing um, sort of specific URL to URL redirects, uh, it'll be fine. It'll be nice and fast. Um, I'm just going to second very strongly 
second um, Alistair's points there. <laughs> yeah, I think that the title for this one is appropriate, and you want to do everything you kind of can to do that in a in a piecemeal approach. Um, the thing I would you know note from that is if something does fail. Because you've done everything at once, you're going to be spending. You're either going to be spending a lot of time trying to figure it out, or you won't know um, where the issue is coming from for 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 until uh, you know months down the uh, months down the line. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, you, you kind of want to make sure um, if if you need to to kind of relate it to any kind of pair. Uh, any kind of similar things in the real world where you would only do things in a, in a piecemeal approach because of um, the potential issues that may come up. Um, and it may not just be one issue. Uh, so that's the other yeah, part that's going to be very difficult if, if this is all done at once. Um, so try to find as many kind of similar real life world examples where people generally take it in a step by step approach. Um, and use that to kind of make your case, uh, because in the SEO world, yeah, this is not this is like the the worst kind of situation you want to be in. Where you're making all these changes, these major changes at once. The other thing I would add to this, um, just thinking about it now after Michael's comments as well, is um, the thing that most people do wrong with this in general is insufficient testing, um, and it is nearly guaranteed that you'll make mistakes and that's okay, no one's perfect. So uh, I can't stress enough how important it is when you're doing migrations to test it and when you think you've tested it, test it again and when you think you've still tested it, test it some more. I mean you need to be rigorous um, with how thorough you are with this because um, invariably what you'll end up finding is that oh, the redirect that I put in um, was too restrictive and then when someone links to my page with query string tracking or Google Analytics tracking on it or a G click ID that they copied from an AdWords ad and then linked to the site, um, or that link 404s. Um, and then you end up dropping equity in your new website because a whole bunch of inbound links that are helping you perform well in search um, no longer pass equity to your site because they're linking to 404 pages and then your rankings drop and tank. Uh, and it's got nothing to do with the fact that you didn't have a good web design, you didn't have good content, um, usability was great, um, but the migration process wasn't good enough, uh, and now your rankings are falling. So my general approach for what you've proposed would be I would do uh, the design, web design first. Don't change any URLs. I wouldn't change any content. I would change the template in the site. Do that. Wait for Google to index the site. Make sure that it's performing um, at least as well as your existing design, conversion rates, goals, all of those kinds of things, rankings in Google, click-through rates in case titles, title tags, descriptions and stuff like that might have changed with the templates. Make sure all of that's the same uh, before you do anything. Make sure Google's bedded it in and it's all happy days. The next part of your thing is you want to reorganize your content um, and bring in new language content at the same time. This one is interesting um, and you could do this in two steps if you want. You could <coughs> Take all of your existing um, URLs, so that uh, year, month, day, blog post title, and migrate those over to language blog post title for your existing content, and do that in one hit. Wait for Google to index everything. Make sure you've got no errors. Test it, test it, test it, test it. Monitor for four, four errors. Test it, test it, test it. Um, again, wait for everything. Wait for it to settle. Don't progress anything else until that's done. Once that's done, you could then bring in the multilingual content because your new URL structure from your existing content is already sitting within en slash blog post, fr slash blog post, de slash blog post. So you've got this well-established structure already in place. Then bring in the multilingual content from your uh, third party, your third domain, and migrate that content in in one hit all of it in one go with the 301 redirects. Um, and then monitor that process. And again, you're monitoring for 404 errors, yada, 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 all of the same stuff and correcting any of those problems with really rigorous testing along the way. 
Um, but don't do it all at once. Yes, br brilliant, Alistair, and, and uh, you too, Micah. Um, look, uh, the, the only thing I, I, I um, would add, by the way, that uh, there's a, a, a SEO questions community comment there, uh, which um, uh, says basically what you guys said, although she, it, it fa failed to say uh, uh, to Maria that um, um, she should just start running now. Um, but to Maria, what, what, what uh, I would do um, is um, go to your client and, and make sure that he watches this clip because it's all fun and games now when, when uh, um, all, all this is being planned and, and your client's paying out good money so obviously he wants to get as many jobs done as possible. Um, but you know, when, all, when things go pear-shaped, it's you that will be blamed. Um, it's you that'll take the rap, and you get, you're going to lose this client anyway uh, if if you take that route. Um, so you might as well uh, risk losing the client uh, and uh, um, fighting uh, to get a proper job done. And uh, I think uh, Alistair's last uh, summation uh, is just a perfect roadmap. Um, anyway, that's 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 what I would do. All right, uh, our um, next question is from uh, Valentina Huff. Um, and Valentina asks, uh, Valentina asks, is href lang good for a site that's in English? Uh, um, in, in all, she said uh, um, also that it serves people in English speaking regions other than America, like Canada, England, etc. I must say I'm not really all that keen um, on our, our new um, Q prompter because uh, now you can see what what a colossal idiot I am. Anyway, uh, what's uh, happening, guys? <laughs> um, so Valentina's uh, question is pretty. Well, the answer to this is pretty simple. Um, hreflang works for any language. For any region, um, it's perfectly fine. Uh, so if she's got one domain, for instance, or all say a .com or a .net, um, and she's got content that she wants to target all in English, but she wants to target it towards um, ENUS, ENCA, uh, ENGB, ENAU, for instance, um, and it's all in English, um, Hrf playing is perfect. It'll help give Google the signal that. This piece of content should be for America, Canada, England, Australia, New Zealand, etc., um, to help avoid confusion from Google's point. It's a perfect candidate. Excellent, uh, Alistair. Anybody else? Okay, I, I see. Uh, uh, Fred Sasso um, um, made, made a, a post on the uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus, um, and Fred uh, is a, a newest moderator on, on, on the SEO questions community. Okay, so I hope um, that, that um, covers it for you, Valentina. Um, Dark Arts Guild asks a question about a keyword or adding a keyword in search. He said, uh, if I remove PHP from my search string, the page I'm, I'm looking for doesn't show. Uh, he goes on to say, I ran into a problem with a website page I've never seen before, and I'm wondering if anyone, anybody else has encountered it. Um, the only time I see the newly added page in Google search is when I add capitals PHP to the search query. Example, my new page, PHP. If I remove PHP in search, the page does not show. Why? Um, I am baffled by this. So am I, so I hope you guys have got something.
Um, so I guess my first thing that I would ask is, <clears throat> looks like, um, let's see, where is the, um, is it only that specific page that's creating um, the, the issue? So, I'm looking at uh, other pages that are using HTML. So the question then is, you know, was there a fundamental change in the whole? Why did I get a redirect? There we go. Um, Yeah, you, you have some pages that are on that are in HTML and some in PHP. Um, so the question that I would have in mind is kind of, um, you know, <coughs> did you switch kind of a little bit of the CMS or something, and now like previous pages um, are not. It, Pages, some pages that used to be on PHP are now on HTML, some on HTML are now on PHP, and you have the ones that were there before for foreign, so they've disappeared. Um, that's probably one of the first questions like, I'd like to know about uh, with this, as I'm, as I'm kind of just doing a quick cursory glance. Uh, and basically, kind of from that, if, if that was the case, you're going to want to rear one them. Uh, through and redirect them together so that uh, you kind of recover some of your rankings there. Um, that uh, was one of the first things I'm, I would you know, ask about. Okay, anybody else? Um, just um Having a quick squiz. Uh, no, I mean, it's 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 weird that that would be happening, really. Well, those like adding the PHP uh, makes the the query more specific. Um, and uh, is is PHP mentioned on that page anywhere? So for me, at least, and I, I granted I'm probably as irrelevant to this as possible given that you know I'm in Australia, um, that query, Baltimore Industrial Painting Contractor, on google.com.au at the moment, um, returns the, their website, jennyindustrialpainting.com, in position two for me, and the page that comes back is their six smart questions page. Um, it's not the industrial painting contractor .php page that uh, they might want, but the page does come back, or a page comes back. I get that here on the on the West Coast US wise. It's the same six six questions one. Yeah, just uh, it's like yeah, it's like position six. I see Mark Steinbeck is. Uh, on the SEO questions community mentioned the six smart questions page. He said that if, if, if um, uh, it, it has a higher ranking than, than your new page. If you do the same search uh, um, for your title, both pages are shown, or use search tools last week, um, you published your article about a week ago, probably it just needs a bit more time to outrank your existing page. And he added your six smart question page does not have the PHP extension. So that's why the new page will show up if you add PHP. If, um, if Dark Arts has got, um, if they've done some testing on this, maybe with split testing with AdWords traffic or something, and they really want the industrial contractor page to rank, um, 
instead of the six smart questions page because it's not as good from a conversion standpoint for them. Um, you know, they could try adjusting their links inside their site to drive more links back to the um, industrial painting contractor, the PHP page that they're interested in having rank. Do you even see it being linked anywhere on their site, the PHP page? I did find it. I, I clicked to it somehow. Hmm. I just can't remember how I got to it. Certainly the, the, the main navigation item called industrial painting doesn't link to it. So, you know, that one, the main navigation item links to one about industrial sandblasting and painting. So, if they could th think about uh, correcting some of the internal links within their site to send the right links with the right anchor text to the right page, um, it'll definitely help the page that they're interested in in ranking properly in Google as well. And what you'll probably find is, like Micah said, in due course, um, once Google's indexed this stuff, the pages will probably flip around in the search results. Um, but I think you could definitely be doing a better job in terms of linking to the right content within your site. Um, and relevant, for instance, across all of your blog posts where you're talking about something to do with industrial painting, link to the contractor page if it makes sense to link to it. Okay. Uh, will we call this one answered, guys? I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, um, we'll, we'll move on to the next. I, I just wanted to point out something. Uh, if, if you have a question that we're answering and um, you'd like to join us um, in the live Hangout, um, if you go to our... Oh, no, I don't know the URL to it. Okay, don't, don't worry about that. I'll, I'll have my act together next week. <laughs> All right. Our, um, our next question is from Kenneth Mullins. Um, the title is, Will the links uh, directed at a de-indexed domain still pass PR? This is a very interesting question. Um, Kenneth asks, uh, looking to build links to my website. Um, I, I did the research uh, at ahrefs and whois.net and I found a domain with a, a nice link profile and good domain authority. I intend to 301 redirect, not develop a site on it, uh, my worry is that Google seemed to de-index the domain that I'm looking to purchase. Will the links directed at a de-indexed domain still pass juice to my, I hate that word, um, still pass juice to my uh, website professional profile um, if I 301 the de-indexed domain to the web property of my choosing? This depends on a variety of situations. Um, so, <clears throat> is the a page that's de-indexed on its own? Um, if, for example, let's take it as as it's in the meta code of the of the site, will continue to the patch page rank um, through the other links on 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 that page. Um, the page itself, because it's being you no know, indexed, I should say, um, won't rank, but at least uh, the links will pass through. Now, why it's being de-indexed could be that it's currently just a, a, a blank page and it's that you know, usual kind of ads on it, so Google's not going to show it anyway. Um, so there's that possibility. Uh, assuming that there are no uh, bad links going to the site, that it wasn't used for some... Um, spam and burn that Tim Kapter has often seen in the, the, the payday loan space, um, then, you know, through wanting should generally pass it through. If it's if it's literally just being there because um, it's not being used anymore, but uh, I, I do like as well the inner web tech, which is like going into the archive.org uh, one and saying, okay, take a look at what it looked like and make sure it wasn't being used for kind of spam purposes. 
Um, oh, Jim, you got rid of it? Oh, okay, good. Um, <laughs> so I, I think just kind of doing a little bit more due diligence of what, why this page is, or domain, I should say, is currently being de-indexed to get an idea of, of whether or not this will help the past PR. But um, the other thing to keep in mind is that you're doing, that the, the site, the domain you're buying is relevant to uh, the site you're directing it to. Um, you want to make sure that is the case because uh, Google definitely frowns upon and potentially has the option to punish your your new website if you're taking um, irrelevant domains and, and kind of pulling them all together. So just be kind of careful about that too. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry about that, uh, Michael. I uh, clicked the wrong button while you were talking. Yes, um, no worries. <laughs> but uh, guys, you can you can you can see the teleprompter on the screen now, can you or not? Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. Uh, there are there are a couple of um, comment or the one comment uh, on uh, uh, from from the community on this question. Um, what I said before was uh, like this is uh, episode 102. Um, if if you've asked a question um, um, in the SEO questions community on Google Plus, um, and if you go to dumbseoquestions.com and um, open up um, um, episode uh, 102, it should be the, uh, the top listing on on the uh, front page of dumbseoquestions.com. Um, if you go to that page, while we're actually answering your question, a button will appear um, which will give you a direct um, link straight into this uh, Hangout. And, and uh, So that if you have a follow-up question uh, to your question, we'll deal with your question as it is written first, um, but if you want to follow up on it, um, you're more than welcome to join us. Um, that button will disappear uh, when we start the next question. So. Um, you have to be quick. Okay. All right. Our, um, our next question is from um, Alex uh, Sam. Um, and uh, Alex um, says, uh, hi team. I uh, Recently I've changed my website URL from HTTP to HTTPS. After the changing of the URL, now my AdWords traffic is showing uh, in referrals uh, instead of campaigns slash AdWords. The AdWords traffic, um, um, the AdWords traffic visible uh, in Google Analytics uh, um, is from the referral site googleads.g.doubleclick.net. Um, kindly uh, provide information how, how to clear uh, this issue. I can't really think why going to HTTPS would cause that to happen. Um, I presume that Alex has implemented 301 redirects from the HTTP to the HTTPS site-wide. Um, that would norm the, what he's showing there would normally happen if um, if there was no campaign tracking attached to the to the clicks from Google. So for instance, if he doesn't have auto-tagging turned on in AdWords, um, which produces the G CLID in the URL, in the landing page URL, the big long letters and numbers mumbo jumbo. Um, so if he doesn't have auto-tagging turned on and he doesn't have manual tagging on the URL, then it will show, say, the double-click referral. Um, I don't know why going to HTTPS would cause that to happen though. If if you look at um, the, the uh, community um, uh, comments, um, uh, Fred, Fred Sasso um, said that it's it's likely to be uh, the the um, um, part part of the string that's broken. Um, um, the, he, 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 Mart and um, Martino Mostar 
Rossner uh, said uh, the redirect from HTTP to HTTPS does not pass the GCLID parameter. If you pass the entire query string from HTTP uh, to HTTPS, and you're most likely done. Yeah, okay. So there you go. <laughs> so this is the redirect then that um, Alex has implemented to migrate from HTTP to HTTPS is only redirecting the base URL um, and it's not including any query string arguments um, in the redirect, which it should. So in this instance, when his AdWords click lands on the HTTP URL with the GCLID in the URL, which is what the auto-tagging in AdWords uses to link up um, the campaign data into analytics, that gets dropped off in the redirect. Um, and then effectively when the Google Analytics tracker fires on the HTTPS domain, um, the traffic from AdWords has got no auto-tagging and there's no manual tagging on it. So then it just shows up the normal referral. So he should correct the redirects. Um, in the meantime, if he can't do that immediately, um, he could go and update all of his landing page URLs uh, within AdWords to go directly to the HTTPS version to avoid the problem in the short term. Excellent, uh, Alistair. Um, I'm just going to play the, um, the the rest of the comments from the community, and of course, uh, if you want to read them, you can um, um, pause um, um, the, the the clip. And of course, uh, also uh, you'll find all of these comments uh, also listed on the, the quest question page on damasioquestions.com. All right, um, our, our next um, is um, a, a question from um, Matt Rains. Uh, Matt uh, has asked, uh, um, he said, okay, so I place an infographic on a relevant site that has a citation back to us. It's stated above the infographic that it's sponsored. Um, will Google destroy us for this? Google will destroy you for anything. Um, I, I've, I've experimented, and sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Is there any clear statement? <clears throat> like life, there is no clear statement. Um, but it's interesting that you've you've done this and destroyed yourself sometimes and not. <laughs> um, generally. Um, Placement of it will, uh, so the, the point kind of is that the site placing the uh, infographic, <clears throat> um, if they're putting the sponsor tag, they also should be no following any of the links going back to you. Um, for the most part, that is an issue on their end. Uh, however, if, if Google feels that this is your main strategy, um, and is the predominance of your, your backlinks, then it becomes an issue on your end um, <clears throat> as well. Uh, if you specifically paid for it, then kind of most of the similar rules generally apply, but if, if they can document that you have directly have paid for it, then they may as well uh, take harm of, upon your site uh, because you didn't get those to be you know, followed. So. Uh, it's very, very rare for Google to have a very clear statement on it because there's so much gray that kind of play, play through. Um, and plus, generally, um, the uh, areas of which kind of with backlinks is that you don't always have it fully in your control. Um, and while, yes, Penguin doesn't necessarily um, provide that kind of innocent before proving guilty mindset, um, outside of kind of paying, there's areas in which uh, Google doesn't directly penalize or they don't have the functionality or ability at this time to find everything and anything around the web. Um, and there's always niche, or there's always exceptions to so many rules that they, they try to kind of provide general viewpoints of what it should be. Um, and the best way really is to just not you close to the line because Google can at any point given it's their algorithm 
shift what that line is between what's considered white hat and what's considered black hat. So um, that's more or less the world of SEO that we live in. Okay, uh, anybody else? All right, uh, I, I draw your attention to uh, Rob Maher's uh, comment uh, on, on the SEA questions community uh, on uh, Google Plus uh, where he said uh, uh, if it's sponsored by you they must uh, use nofollow. Um, our next uh, question is from um, Jai Prakash. Um, it's a, a knowledge graph question. He says, hi everyone. Um, please give me an idea about Google local listing. I see many sites um, have their Google Maps showing uh, on the right hand side uh, um, in search. My question is, Google, does Google have any criteria um, for showing um, the knowledge graph or not? Because my site, deaninfotech.com, um, the, the map is not showing on the right hand side result. Um, I have done um, Google listing but I am unable to show uh, in search. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I think he's actually managed to add it now because I looked at the site. They've got a um, They've got a business listing. The addresses correlate to the site. They've added it as real publisher. Um, it's listed as a software company. Um, it's verified local listing now, and they have connected it to their site with a little, you know, little check. So they pretty much there. Um, I would say if you wanted to appear for your actual. Uh, actual own domain name in the knowledge graph you need to have a few more a bit more engaged a bit more followers than four uh, but that will just come with time uh, but you've you've taken all the steps now um, and and it and it's there the one thing just moving through your site that I did notice every single one of your pages the title is just simply Dean infotech um, if you want to actually even appear in search, you, you need to kind of, you know, just get those sorted. Um, I mean, Google will do its best job as, as, as kind of adding it, but they tend to only just add what they are. So I would just say sort out your titles, as, uh, and there's obviously other things. But, um, yeah, you've, you, you've followed all the steps. Everything's verified. It's all listed, um, and, and it should, should start showing up in your sort of local, local results. Um, yeah. Cool. Uh, anybody else? All right. Would, on the title front, I would uh, also drop his dot colon out of his business name in the title tags as well. So he's got dot colon Dean Infotech colon dot um, surrounding his business name. So when he updates his title tags, as um, Tim point, pointed out, he should make a point of dropping that at the same time. Google's not interested in it um, to the point where when you do a search for their business name, the title tag Google shows in the search results already you know, omits that from the title because Google considers it to be rubbish. So he might as well remove it at the same time. I reckon that would be good advice. Okay, so um, I'll just play the rest of those um, answers from the uh, community. And um, our next question is um, uh, from Iannis Anastasiou. Um, and uh, Iannis asks a question titled, Does language and the ending of the domain impact ranking? Uh, Yanis goes on to say, hi everyone, one question please, uh, does the language of the content and the ending of the domain um, have any impact on, on ranking? Um, for example, 
Um, let's assume one website um, with content in the uh, Greek language um, and uh, will the choice of the domain ending in either .gr or .eu have uh, any any difference in the ranking of um, of a Google search page? Uh, thanks in advance. Yes, it will. So when he um, uses a, a country code domain like .gr, Google automatically geotargets that content to the relevant country that the uh, country code domain is associated to. Uh, there's some exceptions to that, of course. Um, Google have got a, a list of maybe 25 country code domains that they don't automatically geotarget, like .tv or .io, for instance. They treat like a .com, like a, gene like a generic domain. Uh, so if he was to put Greek content onto a .eu or a .com, for instance, or some other generic domain that's not country targeted, um, his content is going to be naturally less relevant to people in Greece, even though it's in Greek, um, than if the content was on a .gr domain. Uh, if he needs to use the generic domain, an EU, for instance, or a .com, um, but he still needs to go after targeting people uh, searching in Greek in Greece, um, he can geotarget his domain or a subfolder um, back to Greece uh, to help it perform like it was a .gr domain, even though it's on a generic domain. Fair enough. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Um, all right. Um, I'll just move on um, to the next one, if I can find my mouse again. Um, this is a question from David Jones um, regarding uh, Majestic SEO trust and citation scores. He goes in to say, I have a quick question about Majestic uh, SEO and their trust and ci citation scores for sites. I have a, a brand new site that was started in mid-July. It already has a trust score of um, um, 25. <laughs> and uh, a citation of 36, uh, yet lots of, of my other sites that have been around uh, for years and, and have more links and pages indexed, but they have lower scores. How, how is this possible? Um, so, you know, to be fair, it's like, okay, w what, uh, what is defined as kind of an, a brand new site? Um, it may be brand new to you, but let's say potentially <clears throat> that site was being used in the past. Um, I don't want to discount that possibility, so that may be why. Um, and so the, there might be previous links and values that have been assigned that Majestic SEO found. Um, the... Other part of it is um, at least some of their scoring system is based on the links um, that they the links that they have. So like you might the new site might have some better quality links, um, and in that case, those better quality are going to lead to higher scores in the Majestic SEO system. Um, so really, kind of when you're looking at some of them, it, it's it's more about the quality of the links that are now coming into that brand new site than some of your older ones that might have gone. Um, and so that's something to consider, and that's why it could be possible that the new site has um, already a better trust citation score than some of your older sites. OK. Uh, anybody else? Uh, just briefly. Um... Wouldn't, uh, you know, the, the, he's looking at comparing Majestic Data or SEO Moz or Ahrefs or any other link graph tool um, and the metrics that they produce um, and trying to 
establish why his rankings are different. Well, they're not Google. So it doesn't matter what the other tools are saying. They're using their own algorithms to determine trust flow and citation flow and all of these magical numbers, all of which have got absolutely nothing to do with Google. So it's, it's important to remember that when you keep looking at these tools that while they try to approximate um, what Google might be doing, they're so amazingly less complex um, and ultimately not Google that you need to take it with a grain of salt. So. Yep, okay. All right, um, let's um, move on um, to question 12 uh, on your run list. Uh, it's from um, Hadil Singh. And before I, I, I mention it, I should say uh, that uh, the Damasio Questions panel is grateful to uh, Semrush. They extend to us, uh, um, to all of us, uh, a guru copy of uh, Semrush. Um, and um, it probably uh, is going to be mentioned in this question. Um, Hardiel asks, what is the best keyword level call tracking tool for both SEO and PPC? I've heard about many tools like if by phone. Oh, uh, actually, no, I'm, I'm totally off, off base, aren't I? Completely. Oh, God. Um, anyway, he says he's heard about many tools like if by phone, but not sure about authenticity. Excuse me while I just go and hide my head in shame. We can't see that. We only see your, your screen. <laughs> it's part of my plan. <laughs> so I think, um, I don't think there's a necessarily a best with this because in most countries there's different providers so you'll need to find the ones that are available for you in um, you know whatever country you're in. So for instance in Australia there's a bunch of them. Um, people like Jet Interactive have got a great product. Um, Delicon have got a great product. Um, all of which do the sorts of things that you're talking about. They attribute goals and conversions back over the phone to where the traffic came from on your website. Um, the thing I would just point out though is that while you can do this with SEM, uh, you can't do it with organic because obviously, you know, 80, 85 percent of the keyword data from organic now is a um, not provided. So a good portion of the conversions you get over the phone, uh, you're not going to be able to attribute a keyword to um, directly. What you could do, just as an aside I suppose, is um, substitute into the keyword um, the page title for instance as a keyword as a substitute when the tracker fires into those tools so that you get something instead of nothing um, for those conversions. So at least you know, for instance, what landing page um, the person came into, which will give you a good strong hint as the sort of keyword that they were typing, uh, so that when the tracker fires, you know, you get something as opposed to getting 15% of them tracked and then 85% not tracked. So there are ways around it, but just keep that in mind for the SEO side of the fence. Excellent. Um, anybody else um, on this one? Okay, we had no uh, forum comments on that one at all. Here's a question from Raghava Chinu. Um, please tell me the way to do comp competitor analysis. Oh, I should have saved my speech for this one. <laughs> um, how about it, guys? How to do competitor analysis? Oh, such a broad topic. Um, depends on what kind of competitor analysis you're looking to do. Backlink, content, um, product, uh, 
some type of product, social ish. Um, there's kind of a variety of different tools, uh, ranking, of course. So um, there's a there's different tons and different tools for that. Um, you know, if 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 you're using if you're looking at kind of the backlink analysis, um, you, know, you have Webmaster tools for yourself to just see how you're doing. But if you're really looking at for competitors, my go-to is generally Majestic SEO. Um, if you're looking more for kind of ranking competitor stuff, um, there are different tools. Uh, I like either Search Metrics or CMrush, um, which of course is helping. Just as a note, the Disclaimer for uh, them providing that to us. Um, the content analysis, um, yeah, that that's no. I can't think of any tools offhand that does a decent one that I prefer. Um, but yeah, through them, uh, you know, what I'm looking for is what I think. Um, if it's kind of a rank analysis to competitor analysis, it's a. Uh, if we start with content, or not content, ranking, then it's asking questions like, um, "What's going on? Have they shot up? Have we shot? Have they shot down comparative to what's going on on my end?" Um, using that to see if there's been kind of a, a specific algorithm update um, that maybe nobody has mentioned. If it's a backlink analysis, it's the usual, "What? Why are they ranking for the way they do for specific phrases or terms?" Um, and diving into kind of what are the type of tactics they're using and trying to classify them in that way and then either uh, replicating or doing a better job of the way that they're doing it, um, assuming that they are. Uh, content side, it's understanding kind of the internal structure of their site and what they're, what they're showing um, and how that compares to ours, assuming that they're doing a better job. Um, is it something that we want to replicate or, or, or do? Um, and tr really trying to figure out why they're doing things what they're doing, all of which for any of them is is you know you always have to work with some form of grain of salt and and you never know kind of the real reasons why, but uh, you make kind of your best guess um, on that. Um, oh uh, yeah, actually like Xenu or Screaming Frog actually for for content if you're looking for kind of the site architecture is a good kind of way of looking through it, assuming their site's not very massive. Um, so smaller sites for that. And then social. Social is kind of a bit more of the promotion side. So what are they doing to get things out there? Um, are do they have a large network of people uh, hired? And it kind of you know pertains a little bit potentially to the backlink side and, and um, their promotional abilities. What is it that they're doing that um, gets them out there into the into the news or media better than you? And kind of looking for those types of things. What are they What are they doing there that helps to um, uh, push them, push them into kind of the greater web. So those are kind of ways, very high, and quick, and you know, starting point things to consider with with any of the competitor type analysis analyses. Yep. Um, I, I, did I hear Semrush mentioned, or did I miss that? I was listening out for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was mentioned. It was mentioned with. Um, Search metrics on the kind of uh, ranking, competitive ranking information. Yeah, because that's one thing that I do use, and that, that's the you know watch that um, it it runs um, all the time, and then gives me a, a rank. I, I pick the sites that I want to compare the, the keyword on, and and it gives me. Uh, um, analysis on you know what, what I'm doing better on and what I'm losing on um, against any set of given sites that I key I think that's a great feature all right um, our, our next is um, from uh, Stephen Sicantelli our, uh, our good friend uh, from a Braxy taxi um, he said please direct me to a cPanel community um, it's, it's a WordPress built website and I have access to that group of gurus but I'm very green and clueless uh, I will need me me mega help perhaps I can read what uh, cPanel experts have to say first I did download the help file 
and the tutorials are very helpful so far. I've got nothing. <laughs> Alice, for once you have nothing? Nothing. <clears throat> cPanel, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of communities out for cPanel. I run cPanel quite a bit. Um, I, I prefer that over some of the other uh, interface dashboards to run sites. Uh, depends on the level of access that he has within his cPanel with his hosting company of the capabilities that he'll actually have turned on or turned off. Um, the communities, I would jump out and just go on, on Google Plus and, and look for some communities for cPanel, and they've got plenty of them. Um, and then you're basically just going to ask your questions. I'm sure they're going to have plenty of tutorials in there for you. Uh, that's how I learn. I just basically look up on YouTube for what I'm trying to learn. I'll grab you know an area that I might have some issues with, uh, maybe uh, under DNS or under you know, subdomain configurations, all those different things that might come up for a website web, or a webmaster uh, and allowing the questions to be able to happen. It helps stuff that you would normally see in the drop downs is kind of, there's, it's just all text. So you're going to just read and half the time you're probably going to lose your mind. But a video normally works better. So. <laughs> Great. Thank you, um, William Rock. Um, okay, so um, let's um, move on to the um, next question. There's a, a lot of comments uh, in the SEO questions community uh, on, on Google Plus um, for, for that particular question. Um, okay. Um, w. Andrew Powell. Um, wants to know about the SEO ramifications of using the Instagrate um, to WordPress plugin. Uh, he says, uh, does anyone have any experience in terms of SEO with using the um, Instagrate to WordPress plugin? Uh, I won't read the URL out, it's there. Um, I'm concerned that the pages which are pulling in my Instagram photos are actually hurting the site's overall Google ranking but I have no specific proof. In particular, since the posts from this plugin are just images and titles, there's not much original text on those pages. Um, any thoughts? Well, <clears throat> yeah. my initial, my initial uh, you know, from, I mean, I've never used this plugin, but from what you, you're explaining, so it just pulls your image from um, Instagram, okay, onto a particular page. So, you know, regardless of what it's pulling from Instagram, that could even relate to you just putting your own photos on or any other photos from anywhere else. If you are only adding an image and not actually anything else on page um, around that image, well, regardless of where that image comes from, it's not going to do you any good. Um, you, need to, you, you, you need to provide something on that image, um, uh, you know, one to a user. Uh, obviously, if a user lands on a page, you need to explain to him the context of that image. You're not exactly just going to land on a page and just leave it with an image. You, 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 you quite naturally would automatically add something to it. Look what I found on Instagram. Check out this car that's been painted pink um, with a flower sticking out the top. Do, do you know what I mean? You're still going to explain the image. So um, regardless of where you take an image, you still need to add to it or add value to that page. Um, uh, you know, for the user, as well as, unfortunately, for Panda, because if Panda just sees really thin pages just with a title and it can only read title and, and, and an alt image text on a particular page, it will deem a lot of these pages to be, you know, thin and um, sort of and filter them out of the search results. So it's, uh, you know, of benefit to you, no matter where you take an image, 
that you add value to that image. So it will benefit search as well as a specific user. Uh, because think of it from a user's point of view. If you just land on and see an image, wh what is this? What's the context of the image? Why am I finding this amusing? Why am I finding it funny? Why am I finding it sad? I mean, what is it? What's the thought behind it? What, do you see what I mean? Um, so, so yeah. I mean, regardless of the plugin, which I obviously don't know, um, you still need to add value to an image or a page with an image on it. Yep, fair enough. Anybody else? I think, I think that was a, a very good answer anyway. Um, here we have a question um, from Niraj Kuma, who's asked a, a, a lot of questions of us. Um, he wants to know about the advantage, um, if there is any, of um, Google Partner Certification. Specifically, he says, is there any advantage of Google Partner Certification? Is there any, is, are there any other certificates, um, avail such certificates available from uh, Google? Hey, Jim. I think I've got an answer on that one. Yeah, well, look, yeah, don't stand on ceremony, William. Um, if you, if, if, you know, it's dog eat dog here. If you have a, uh, a vacant space, fill it, mate. Okay, no problem. So basically the certifications, I think, I mean, I don't have any of the Google certifications because they change so rapidly. Um, to me, having that certification only says I've got a certification but doesn't tell me that I have the skills to be successful. They, I just passed the test. Um, and being a partner is a good thing, yes, if you're an SEO company and that's what you do. I mean, you need to actually continue the cert uh, certification cycle. You can't just do it once. You've got to do it all the time. Um, so it's a, once you jump into the certification process, it's a continuation learning uh, evolution. But uh, to me, I don't think I'll ever actually go for any one of those certifications, even though I'm at the level I'm at, but at the same time as I still study those certifications, I still study what they teach. And I think that right there, even if you're not going after the certification, go to learn it. And there's plenty of uh, Google training tutorials out there, and uh, just have fun and learn. And you're going to increase your skills anyways. At the same time, as you're going to help your clients uh, develop a better experience in their uh, analytics, their paid advertising. So to answer the question, I think there's a multiple different certs, but the ones that I would probably be after would be Google AdWords and Google Analytics. That's my take. Cool. Anybody else? All right. So now we're up to uh, question 17, and uh, Brad Sachs, um it sounds like bad sex, doesn't it? Um, Brad Sachs um, asks a question on uh, site redesign and ranking. Brad says, uh, my team has been doing SEO work on a website for nine months. We were steadily moving up the ranks for our keywords and last month the owner decided to do a site redesign. Although our ranks have not fallen yet, our bounce rate has shot from 20% to 60%, uh, even though the site is much more visibly appealing. What are your thoughts on the cause of this uh, drastic change? I think the first thing I would look at with this would be um, I would start breaking down the traffic makeup of that bounce traffic before and after the redesign, say two weeks before, two weeks after, to see if the composition of that high bounce traffic is the same. So for instance, do you get approximately the same bounce rates from direct traffic, referral traffic, search, paid search, uh, etc. Um, invariably one of those traffic segments, or, or all of them, are going to be up uh, after the fact. Um, if you find one that is high, then start drilling in. Um, other things to check that could cause these are things like um, device problems. You might not be serving the 
tracker correctly to different device types. So check the technology section in Google Analytics um, to make sure that you know all versions of IE, Firefox, Chrome, etc., um, are all firing the tracker and that the bounce ranks have been stable over time. Um, but essentially, you'll need to start digging into the different segments within GA um, and then probably start applying secondary filters or secondary dimensions to a number of the reports to find out where the traffic is that's bouncing very high uh, so that you can sort of start narrowing down where the actual problem may lie. Um, it could literally be that despite the fact that your new website looks beautiful, um, the branding might have changed visually to what people have expected in the past and they don't recognize it anymore as being the site that they think it is. Um, or the load time of your site may have changed dramatically. Maybe you've got a few images on your site that um, were not compressed properly and you've actually got like a two and a half megabyte JPEG image that hasn't been compressed and it loads very slowly. Um, all of these things, for instance, you could check the load time performance in um, Google Analytics. It's got the website performance stuff. Um, have a look at the bounce rates by landing page. Find out whether or not an individual landing page, like your home page, is very, very high, but maybe other pages in your site aren't. Um, all of these sorts of things. You, you, you'll have to go digging to find out what the problem is, basically. One more, <clears throat> one more thing I'd like to add to that. You know, based off the analytics, I think that the flow reports is another thing that to think about. You know, looking at you know, you can you can look at the traffic all the way from the segmentation, like Alistair mentioned, but also going down to the keyword level and then the page level. So you can also start to see where your drop up, drop off the drop offs are and identify those pages. You can also do go go back into your uh, page um, analytics and then also look at resorting the bounce rates for your highest and starting going down the list and just opening up that page and seeing, you know, what does this page look like? Like Alistair said. Is it got a? Does it have a big load image? Does it actually? You know, what happened to those pages in transfer? If those are starting to have bounce rates that are pretty high, you definitely want to bring those back down. But how? And that's a matter of looking at it's possibly A/B split testing and just looking at what the page and the visitor experience is like. So, good point, Alistair. Yeah, good one, guys. Um, all right. Um, uh, our um, next question uh, is um, from online publish. No, no, sorry, I, I apologise. I'm wrong. Um, it, it's a question from um, Renaco um, Security, um, and oh, so I've just got to find my place again. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. Um, it's Renuka Shuri, that's right. Ren Renuka Shuri. That's uh, a simple question. What is keyword rich anchor text? Was displayed, uh, was, I should say, explained uh, um, by the inimitable Dave Elliott uh, on the uh, SEO questions community on Google. Plus. So simple quick answer to this basically is any keyword that's um, got high commercial intent, i.e. if you had a website that uh, ranked very well for that term, you could make a lot of money off it. For instance, generate a lot of leads that might lead to a lot of money or generate a lot of online sales. Um, any, anything that's got high commercial, i.e. monetary value, is considered to be a commercial anchor. Um, the easy litmus test for this, um, simplistically, is to go into AdWords and have a look at the estimated um, cost per click for a given keyword. The higher the cost CPC, the more competition there is, which as a loose proxy basically uh, suggests that there's more money to be made um, in that vertical, which is why there's more people competing on it, driving the cost of the ad up or the click up. Yep. Um, we should add that we have this plan to um, corner the market on New York hotels. Just waiting for the weekend to set it, put it into place. 
All right. Um, online publishing services dash promise media. Um, asks, do backlinks really work anymore? Uh, he says, I have seen sites lose important backlinks and not experience a drop in traffic. I have seen sites gain important backlinks and not experience an increase in traffic. So do backlinks really work anymore? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Share the show uh, of him. Can you explain that, Alistair? <laughs> so there's been some interesting stuff done about this. Um, if you wanted to go and read about this recently, um, just as a, you know, background knowledge, um, Rand Fishkin ran some tests recently that he published on Moz where they removed links. Um, which he's talked about as, uh, you know, a ghost effect or something like that of um, links to a website. Um, and essentially what he's shown in his um, tests, which were repeatable, is that once he's gained links um, and then uh, those links are taken away, his website continues to rank for some period of time uh, after the links have been pulled down and Google have re-indexed the pages that had the links on them. Uh, his website continues to rank for those phrases um, that those links boosted him up in the search results for. Um, it's as if the, uh, you know, when a link gets taken down, maybe there's some sort of a half-life, a natural decay of the effect that that link has over time and over several months or maybe years, uh, the effect of that link may eventually fade. But certainly in the immediate short term after that link has been taken down, it continues to support the rankings of the site that it was linking to. Yeah, I, I think that's as good as it gets. Thank you, Alistair. Uh, and uh, by the way, I'm glad you're still here for this uh, this last question. Um, this um, is a question um, from uh, uh, Alex Sam. How to set up goals on Ajax uh, forms using uh, Google uh, Tag Manager. Um, oh dear, I didn't start it, did I? What an idiot. Okay, he said, goes on to say, uh, our website has been using uh, a contact form in Ajax. So how do we track the, the single page? Um, kindly provide step-by-step -step instruction script and tag manager screenshots. Well, look, man, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, our budget doesn't go that far, um, but I'm sure uh, somebody here will, will have a good answer for you. So, I haven't done this myself, but the basic process for this is going to be he'll need to put together a um, an event listener that will listen for. Um, the success, whatever the success is for the AJAX form. So you press submit, um, the AJAX request posts the form data to the server and something displays back into the web page that says, hey, thank you for your um, inquiry, we'll get back to you shortly. Um, you'll need to attach a, an event to that um, text notification that's in the page or Probably a simpler way to do it would be to attach um, an event to the on-click action of the submit button and then fire that as um, the event. Uh, and then in terms of tracking that into Google Analytics, you could do this one of two ways. You could either fire a virtual page view, so fire the, pay, the track page view function with a... Um, with a new URL like a thank you.html, even though the browser isn't being redirected to that page, you could fire the tracker a second time um, with this new custom URL, uh, whatever the thank you page URL is that you want to use, and then bind a goal in Google Analytics to this new uh, virtual page view. Alternatively, um, fire a Google Analytics event um, when you press submit on the form 
and then attach the goal in Google Analytics to the Google Analytics event um, to measure that. So there are the two ways that you can actually configure the goal in GA, um, and then yeah, either an on-click event on the on the button, um, or the um, watch for the text change uh, on the success of the form submission. Excellent. Um, you go. On. Sorry, Alice. Sorry, I was just to say uh, quickly. If you wanted to go and read about um, some amazing stuff. Um, on Google Tag Manager, you should go and follow someone in Google Plus named Simo Ahava. Um, he he is smashing Google Tag Manager content on his blog at the moment. I mean, like rock star, um, best content on Google Tag Manager, in my opinion, that's hitting the web at the moment. He's putting out really really fantastic content. He's putting out stuff about all sorts of useful problems that everyday people have got. Um, and also some really cracking, um, really cracking advanced high-end Google Tag Manager functionality as well. Um, well worth your time to go and read his stuff. You'll be smarter for it. Brilliant. Um, I, I wonder, Alistair, if you um, add, add that um, to add, add his um, name to um, this particular question on the domestiaquestions.com site. Um, all right, um, um, Alex, Sam, uh, the lack of uh, screenshots notwithstanding, I, I'm fairly sure that uh, you've just been given the drum. Um, it looks like uh, we've done it again for yet another week, guys. We've, we've covered uh, all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google+. Plus. Um, now we move on to our uh, news community. Um, our news community uh, um, takes topics from anyone, uh, but mainly from Mr. Edwin Young. Um, and uh, each week um, we discuss uh, these uh, items of SEO news which have popped up uh, around uh, the web. And the first one uh, is regarding uh, a, um, a share, it was posted by Edwin Young, but uh, it was originally shared by Maria Mova. Um, and she said, our, our spiffed up uh, site link search box is now live. Um, with these changes, more traffic will get sent directly to your site whenever the search box shows up for it in our results. Um, you also get a site-specific autocomplete. All you need is a site internal search engine and schema.org website markup on your homepage. Somebody tell me what that all means. <coughs> well, um, more or less, this allows to put your autocomplete that you are not, well, yeah, your own internal site autocomplete onto uh, Google. Um, so it's a nice add-on for users to quickly kind of go through your site as another way to find the specific page they want. And in the flip side, it gives Google some great data of internal searches on your own site that uh, I'm sure they would love to have and, and try to leverage to improve their own um, search experience. So <clears throat> depending on how cynical you are, it's a it's a win, win, or a um, larger win for Google if a lot of people do this because they're, they're going to get a lot more search data from internal sites that they normally wouldn't necessarily have. Um, but uh, if you find this to be a useful win, um, this is something where you can essentially do more of the schema. And yay, um, as they start to do a type search, you can kind of specify uh, a drop-down menu of terms that a lot of people have been using on your own site without them having to do another search when they when they get to your site itself. I don't think the, it, it is the drop-down there. Uh, the drop-down is, uh, the autocomplete is uh, suggested by Google. You cannot suggest that yourself. Are you sure? Uh, what you, yeah, I'm really? pretty sure. When I look at the def uh, developers.google.com, uh, um, 
the Sitelinks uh, search box. Basically, what you do is uh, a small uh, JSON LD snippet where you uh, state your the URL and the URL of the of your search engine, basically. And once you put that on your uh, home page, uh, instead of Google going to its own uh, site colon uh, search, it will redirect the search to your search engine. Wait. Does it make sense, uh, Micah? Not really. Well, <clears throat> not saying your explanation makes doesn't make sense. I mean, like, I mean, uh, let me get a quote. Uh, well, um, Edwin, you're absolutely correct as far as uh, from what I've been reading, as far as being able to put that tag into subsections within your your search area elements of your site. But I think it's going to work really well for car sites. Like, for example, I'm looking for a car, you know, a certain model, certain year. When the searcher actually hits that on the search page, Google's going to automatically find those relevant pieces based off your tagging, from what I understand. And then bring the, say it's a 1968 whatever, you know. You want to know where the parts are quickly, and it's, it'll make it a lot faster for searchers to get exactly what they want. So it's still going to be controlled by the back-end algorithm, of course, but it's not, at least you have a chance to tag it. No, I think, um, um, I'm pretty sure. I think Amazon uh, has it when you, for example, type in David Bowie, and uh, within the search result, right? And within the search result, there's a search box. If you use that search box and type in, for example, David Bowie for, uh, for the uh, Amazon uh, uh, site links, then you will be redirected to Amazon.com and uh, not to uh, Google.com uh, and then a site colon search. So you will be directed directly to the search engine of that particular site. Um, the, the quote, uh, they say, the search box is now more prominent uh, above the site links, uh, supports autocomplete, and if you use the right markup, will send the uh, user directly to your uh, website's own search pages. So the autocomplete though is still of theirs. <coughs> it's not you can yeah. impact it. In the documents, they also say uh, uh, still block uh, the search results of uh, uh, your search engine from uh, this uh, from the search results. So uh, the recommended practices is uh, prevent crawling of your site search result pages with robust.txt. Hmm. You guys misread that. All right. Uh, I thought the the latter would have been actually kind of useful. <laughs> or the so that's that's quite that's quite a new thing uh, that they are sending uh, um, basically traffic to your uh, search engine. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean it just seems like a why add this type of code when you can just do a very quick check mark in something like Webmaster Tools to do that. Interesting. Oh, it's, it's also in uh, Webmaster Tools, then. Uh, what I mean is, like, implementation, just instead of having to put schema. Oh, OK. Yes. Yeah. It, it's just, like, it seems like a lot of work for just, a. Hey, do you want to have it be site search, or do you want it to have it be your, your search engine? So, yeah. so the only thing that's... Um, special about this is that you can explicitly set this up now. Google have been providing this functionality for large complex sites for five years. For instance, well, maybe not that long, but a very long time, Wikipedia has had um, a, a SERP search object uh, nestled or nested within their um, search unit um, for a long time. Websites like IBM um, Oracle, Sun.com, um, any of these massive websites that have got massively complex information architectures um, that it's genuinely hard to find content, Google have been insetting um, the search, um, the same basic functionality, um, a little bit not, not quite as fancy as the current implementation, but 
the same basic kind of functionality within the service for a long time. The difference is now, while beforehand um, Google's algorithms determined whether or not you were eligible for it based on you know, your site size, complexity, authority, quality, do you have site search, can they send a GET request to site search or does it have to be HTTP POST? Um, you know, a whole raft of factors and they would algorithmically determine whether or not you could show it. Now you can choose to explicitly um, have this show up for your website. Still you need to make quality guidelines but I suspect that for websites that aren't IBM.com or Wikipedia for instance, so the, the juggernauts of the internet, um, you're going to be able to get this functionality for your site assuming you're, you're in good standing and you're a good quality site um, and you implement the markup, you're, you're going to get this option show up in a service. That's what I expect is going to happen. Okay, um, we're right to move on, guys. I see William Rock in the chat said, Alistair, I can listen to you talk all the time. Great job. Yep, me too. <laughs> it's my soothing voice. <laughs> That's what it is. That's what it is. <laughs> all right. Um, our uh, next question um, is, or oh, sorry, our next news item um, posted on the SEO News community on Google+. Plus. Um, is another one found uh, and curated by Edwin Yonk um, on uh, EMMA's response to Google's antitrust proposal. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm not going to try and read it out, but I, I will play it um, so that it, it, it can it can be seen uh, if you uh, are, are using the, the video clip. You can pause the clip and, and, and read it. Um, but um, while that's playing, um, somebody, would you like to talk over it? I uh, know oh, you can't because if you oh, actually yes, I can jam this on. Just one second. Oh, the wonders of modern science. Um, Okay, yeah. Um, all right, can somebody talk over this while it plays up the screen? No, for the benefit of those that might be using this clip to pause it and see what was actually written in this news item. Well, this is the reply from uh, the publishers um, to Google's rival leaks. Uh, I think it was in May or January uh, of this year. Uh, Google's proposal uh, was to, uh, within uh, the ads, um, they would have rival links and publishers uh, basically could bid up uh, against each other for the for that particular position. So, and the publishers aren't really happy about this. Uh, if if you read uh, the uh, eighteen page PDF, and they the the, the tone is quite aggressive. Uh, um, uh, let me see. Uh, for example, uh, Emma says uh, using its monopoly in search, Google uh, has made it economically impossible for content providers to disallow Google's use of content within its uh, specialized search uh, servers. And the main thing, uh, the main argument, uh, I think, uh, I, I think the main argument is that uh, they propose uh, they are op uh, they object against uh, universal search where uh, basically virtual uh, search engines are blended in to the horizontal uh, search engine did anybody else read uh, to respond or no No. Well, I did see um, the post on the Google blog um, about this. That, was it Eric Schmidt that wrote it? Yes, yes. It's quite... I don't, I don't understand why uh, nobody at Google said uh, to Eric Schmidt this is not a good idea, but 
Um, I, I commented uh, on uh, Micah's post uh, about uh, that he was happy uh, with it. <laughs> it gives insight into just what Google thinks. <coughs> They're there for users, not for other websites. And if you're outdated, um, it, that, so be it. That's that's tough luck. So, so can I ask Micah, who is Emma? E M M A, European uh, European, European Magazine and Media <laughs> Association. Okay. Basically, the publishers. The European publishers. We in the U.S. would call them a lobbying group. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. So, is this not the same as what Google have gone up against in the past, where they've been required to provide the ability to opt out of other vertical um, search elements? Like, you know, in the past, yes. if you rewind ten years, Google's standpoint on all of vertical search was. If you don't want to be in vertical search, robot us out, and we won't use you. Of course, publishers can't do that because then they get roboted out of search in general, not just Google News, for instance. Then Google had to make concessions, I'm sure, over time to allow publishers to opt out of a subset of search, i.e., don't use me for um, Google News or allow... Um, allow Yelp to show up in search, but you can't use my content within Google My Business local listing pages and suck down uh, review content and things like that. Is yes. this simply new in the EU because those concessions Google have had to make in the past haven't been made in the EU yet? Is that what this is? No, no, no. Uh, it, it's still the case. For example, with uh, the uh, Meta Robots, um, you can still say uh, Google um, hyphen uh, news and then no index, and then your site wouldn't be um, in uh, the news uh, the, uh, the news uh, search. Um, Emma says that that is not enough uh, because um, the search results are blended into the uh, the normal search engine with a universal search, and thereby. Uh, they argue that uh, that is hurting uh, the overall ranking of the site. But they don't know that. No, but I mean, you can make the... <coughs> you can kind of make a decent case of it. I mean, it's like... It, it, that. Well, let me rephrase that. You can make a decent guess that it is. I mean, it's just like, oh, Google added another slot for ads. It's going to hurt the organic. It's that same... No, it is against the one box. Universal search is the, is the one box, and within the uh, search results, um, some sites get higher because they rank in the vertical search engine. If Google thinks it is a news item, uh, it, it will make a one box, and will also uh, list news sites higher than uh, other sites. Yeah. So yeah. It, it will mix and match a little. It, it, it literally uh, blends the... Uh, the uh, vertical search engine in the horizontal uh, uh, search engine. So if you're not in the uh, in the news uh, uh, in Google News, you might drop off to page two or uh, some, something lower because the news uh, a news section had to be added in, uh, in the overall uh, search engine results. Do it make sense yeah, or not? I mean, Doesn't this really suck of like hypocrisy from the from Emma though? I mean, they're basically saying to Google, we don't want to be inside Google News, but we want um, all of the benefits of universal search and all of the traffic that comes from search, um, but we don't want to give you any of the content to use inside news, which you use to highlight newsworthy websites and good quality websites within a universal object. Like, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If they want the traffic, they have to allow Google in. If they don't want the traffic, then piss off. Take your bat yeah. ball, 
Can I get your that's, traffic from someone else? That's, that, is, that is not what they say. They say we want uh, all the websites uh, to rank evenly within the horizontal search engine. So they they clearly uh, are against uh, the the uh, universal search. That is that is basically their uh, big thing. They say, okay, we we know that we can. Uh, uh, opt out from Google News, for example, but because of universal search, the vertical search engine is embedded into the normal search results. So they're, saying, they're saying to Google that they would like them to, for instance, remove universal search. Or at least not have it be the impact that it is today. They, they want them to allow a, a website that has opted out of Google News so in terms of the one box that shows up at the top of the search results for news sites or news quality content, they want Google to generate the one box based off algorithmic signals for organic search, irrespective of whether or not the publisher is inside Google News. Is that right? Indeed. Yes. Yes. So Alistair goes right back to your same part where you can't have, uh, have your cake and you know, your two heads. I think universal search is going to be, you know, it's still there. It's been there forever, but now it's actually integrated with what they call the knowledge vault, going all the way back to you know, knowledge graph. You know, knowledge was at uh, Google Square before that, and then you know, the less goes on of the names, but it's still the same pattern. Um, it's just modified. Uh, with the one box, I always have seen, lately I've been seeing the actual reference person of the actual content. So they're not just scraping the content, they're using the content, putting it in the one box seat at number one. So it's actually a good thing for your news agents, right? Because it's actually figured out that you have authoritative elements within inside the news that you're putting out and it's worth actually sharing to the visit. Otherwise, you, know, you can't have all those little elements go away because they have to see that in the city. Okay, um, have, have we um, covered this uh, as well as we could have? Well, we we, we can do Eric Smith uh, behind, no? <laughs> well, look, you know, I, look, uh, Google, uh, you know, can, can uh, you know, pretty much say what they want uh, these days um, because uh, they, they are up on top of that mountain top. Um, the, the only thing I'd, I'd say is that, um, you know, it, it, as, as, as well as being confident of their position, it's, it's also um, known as hubris. And, and uh, what Eric Smith should know that uh, hubris uh, is generally followed by nemesis. Um, Anyway, that's that's my opinion. Uh, I I I'm, I'm not a great fan of Eric Smith. Um, okay. A anybody else? All right. Let's um, uh, cover the uh, the next one, which uh, is another post uh, found by Mr. Yonk, um, and it was on image classification, classification with localization and detection. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll play this one uh, uh, to uh, Ed, Edwin, and uh, uh, if you like, uh, if you would speak to it. Uh, sure. Um, this this article is from uh, Google Labs or Google Research, so this isn't live. This is just uh, Google showing off what what uh, what what is possible uh, with their uh, technique these days. And basically, it is an interesting read. Uh, Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like the, uh, I like kind of seeing what they're doing. They're you know, basically detector with, of not just the whole image, but individual parts. It's really, um, it's really cool to see kind of the technology that's expanding and how they're getting better at uh, recognizing parts within images more and more. Yeah, and also relative uh, small uh, things in an uh, in an image. Uh, um, uh, like a washer uh, in the back, uh, there stands a person, so they 
can identify that as a person, it's quite impressive. Um, what what they what the robots of Google try to do in this case is uh, they have um, a, a classification um, and they have a classification with uh, uh, localization and then the detection. Uh, I personally like how far they've gotten with it. I mean, I was kind of looking back to, you mentioned a little bit about being able to detect uh, pieces and parts of an image. They've also started doing that back in 2012 with YouTube to try to identify um, how to understand what a cat looks like. And so artificial intelligence had to go out for, I think it was a month, and identify all the different pieces of cat videos and then come back with an answer. Um, and that right there shows I mean, back in even 2012, and they've been doing this even prior to this. So uh, artificial intelligence learning is you know, machine learning out on steroids now, uh, where we actually always talked about machine learning way back in the past, but now it's, it's to that level where they can identify everything. I think the biggest thing they're looking for is to identify you know, uh, images that they don't want either in Google in the Google wall or on you know anywhere in the search such as you know pornography or you know, drugs or whatever it could be that's illegal they're, they're trying to identify that through the AI system that's kind of how I think of uh, what they're trying to do with, with those type of go to go let's I'll see you next week Thank you, Alistair. Well, Look forward to seeing you next week, man. Well, I'll be I'm not sure if I'll make it, but I'll try. Okay. Hopefully, I can get these names in at the hotel. All right, and, and Mike, you're, uh, you're he heading off too, and we won't see you next week either. There's a good chance, probably not, but I'll see what I can do at an, at an internet cafe. <laughs> <laughs> you'll have to get past the Great Firewall of China as well as uh, I'm sure you'll find an internet cafe. Um, where are you going to, Alistair? Uh, Bangkok. Uh, you, you and um, you and Mike are uh, pra practically a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, you're, you're going to China. I mean, it's not that far apart. You, you, sh you guys should meet up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a stone. Sorry, Jim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a train it might be interesting that goes all the way through, but, but yeah. 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 Probably a little bit far. I don't think my calendar quite stretches that far, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right guys. Uh, so, okay. I, I, look, um I'll I'll be sending you a message through the week. I I've, I've we've we've got a great plan, I think. Um See what see what you think of it. Okay, cool. cool. Thanks, guys. See you, Tim. See you, William. See you, Evan. Yeah. See you, David. Good night, Alistair. All right. Um, will we go on to the next article, guys? I'll take take that as as a yes. Um, uh, this this is uh, one. Another one found by Mr. Young. He's tireless. Um, this was um, was this a, a, a Google one? Um, oh no! Um, oh, Mr. Kappa's in, in mentioned in this. Okay, um, it was on a, on a guide to uh, unnatural links penalty, audit removal, and recovery. Uh, Tim Kappa first argues that both. Manual and algorithmic penalties uh, stand from the fact that Google is in effect policing the search result um, based on its guidelines. Um, look, I'll, I'm just going to play this and um, uh, would one of you guys talk to it, please? Well, uh, what what I found interesting was that uh, uh, they made connection uh, between uh, real life uh, commerce and e-commerce. Um, 
let me quote him, the same uh, quid pro quo uh, and deal broking that powered the world of commerce long before the internet existed has now become a, uh, a sort of underground internet uh, backlinking economy as well. So he's talking here about um, uh, people buying links, buying and selling links, and selling links, and that within uh, uh, the normal uh, uh, commerce, it was uh, it was okay, but now on the internet, uh, due to Google, it is not, and uh, pretty much the two uh, don't go hand in hand with each other. Somehow I, I, I must have missed this article. Um, yeah, I, I apologise, uh, Tim, but, but I, I've been um, flat, flat out, um, um, you know, fishing on Fraser Island, um, and I did. I, I really didn't have much bandwidth, so I, I did mostly fishing. So somehow I missed it. I apologise, but I'll, I'll read it now. Um, and, and I see yeah, in the in the chat that you don't have a lot of bandwidth. Um, do you want to tr test it or try it? No. Okay. All right. Um, it's pe the article is Penguin Three: Google Unnatural Links Penalty uh, Audit Removal and Recovery. It's by um, Tim Kapper and posted on OnlineOwnership.com. Uh, is that right, Tim? Onlineownership.com? Yeah, yeah, onlineownership.com. I'm going to, um, over the next couple of weeks, just be expanding on each of the different sections because there was so much in it that each one in itself needs expanding on. So this is kind of a broad overview, and then we're going to dive into, you know, all the different gray areas of links and, uh, yeah, it's just it's going to be expanded on but this is a broad overview now and then we're going to dive into all the different bits over the next few weeks as and when time allows and a quick question on that um, I haven't gotten a chance to read that but I'll go out and check it out but the um, you know with the, with the panda or sorry penguin 3 coming out and everybody's kind of fearful of it the most of the posts that I've seen recently are all just basically people are saying, well, I disavowed everything, and uh, I haven't come back. Why? And it's <laughs> it's it's confusing to so many people. They're like, okay, I disavowed these links, and I keep getting a bunch of links in. Or, you know, if you look at their history of the path, they've hired different companies in the past, and they didn't realize that they did that, or they did that, but the new person on staff in the marketing department has no clue of their past history. But then, you know, you look at like Majestic SEO tools. You know, they've got, you know, an export tool that's really simple, right? I'm not going to plug you know, those guys too much, but I think that it, it it's probably one of the best tools um, for exporting all of the actual links and uh, multiple links from one domain so that you can find a comment that may be all, all the way through the site. And in that export list, you have now a list to give the webmaster and say, here's all the links that I have. Can you remove those for me? Uh, versus just saying, hey, can you remove my link from your web page? Well, they're not going to go and search for your link. Give them the actual feedback that they need to get rid of that. And at the same time, as I'm looking at with everything with Panda 3 and 4 and 5, uh, or sorry, Penguin 3, 4, and 5, all those different updates are going to come. I think it's going to be a bad experience for a lot of these people wanting, that are hoping to come out of the penalty but haven't actually done the next steps, which is basically improve their visitor experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, firstly, what we've got to understand, uh, the, 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 the noise coming out of Google at the minute, um, and including today, actually, um, is that Penguin 3 is going to be a slightly different animal. Uh, yes, it will be links, but... Um, I mean, it's been 11, 11 months now since since it last refreshed, um, and I, I, it's going to be a different animal, and it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, we'll only be able to see when it comes out, um, in what in sort of what version is this going to look. But um, going back to original people that cleaned up their act, 
and this this is something that you know I think everybody and I think well I don't know if Google's feeling feeling a little bit under the pressure but there's been a lot of stuff out there saying listen you need to refresh it now or at least remove release the people that got stuck in penalty last October um, because the only way to get out of an algorithmic penalty from Penguin is for Penguin to rerun. If you have a manual penalty, you know, it, it's so much easier because you have the um, recourse of a reconsideration request. You can do the work, you can submit a recon, and, you know, if you don't get past it the first time, you have the opportunity to do it again and again and submit the recon and be released. Um, people that would hit with uh, algorithmically in October, 11 months ago, haven't had any recourse until they refresh the next one. So if they've done the work, they still are not seeing any any you know any recovery um, until the, until the next one comes out. Anyway, Google came out today and said, look, you know, obviously we're working on this. We're going to get it refreshed. Uh, they acknowledge the fact that people are, people are sitting and languishing. Um, but once they've got this new Penguin updated, then it won't be as long in between refreshes. It'll be like it was before for the last two years, kind of every six to seven months. Um, so, yeah, there, I mean, there has to be a recourse or you have to have some form of notification or, or something. Um, but, but hopefully, and based off of the re uh, reconsider request and all those different things, and then you know somebody gets hit by this algorithm, they do all those different steps, and they still don't see a response. And that's what a lot of the media, like you just mentioned, a lot of the media is actually saying there's no, no change, it hasn't refreshed for so long. But to me, I've actually seen something a little bit different with because I've taken some of those really challenging clients, not because. You know, well, for, for purposes of learning, really, um, I wanted to see if I can actually pull somebody out of that that uh, that penalty, even if it was a temporary penalty. Removing the links now, some of the links are still there, unfortunately. But a marketing company prior to these guys did exactly what I talked about before, which is basically, you know, we hired them in the past and uh, went through a whole process. But once you can kind of get rid of some of the nasty ones. You know, Google's going to see that in its algorithm. It's going to see that those have been removed, even though there's not a refresh. But what else have you done to the site to come back in your ranking? Because you know, it's just links. It's not content. It's not visitor experience. It's all those other elements that they've been asking. For. I, I, I think personally that we're going to see a slight. You know, when you said modifications to the Penguin Three, I, I still feel strongly when, once it actually does go into its circulation, if it, if it does go into a constant update like Panda does, I think that they're going to be working together in a combination with semantic learning as well as this, this new Google Vault technology yeah. mapping. But, but yeah. um, what, what um, you know, Google came out with, or, or specifically John Mueller came out with, very, very early days uh, when Penguin, I think, probably the second refresh. Um, there is an element of trust added into the algorithm now, or, you know, even then. Um, and basically, I think, you know, and, and, and I've definitely seen this. I've seen it with two sites that I've recovered um, from manual, okay? Not algorithmically, but from manual. One site, uh, very well, you know, very high PR, um, a great amount of, you know, just really good, good links to it, um, very well mentioned and referenced. So uh, just a great domain. Uh, unfortunately, got slapped uh, with a manual because it had over optimization in there, some some dodgy over optimization. Anyway, recovering that, sorting that one out, I saw it kind of recover. In so, you know, even after it was it, it was released, it still took about five to six months before it started recovering back to sort of normal traffic levels. Um, the other one, 
was, uh, I think it was only, it had only been around for a year. So, of course, this site, when Penguin came out, got slapped silly because it was just so easy, you know what I mean? It, it was just, you just look at one look at the, the, the back, the, the link profile, and it was a nightmare, you know. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't have to be a search engine to figure a penalty out there. Um, now, this one, it, although it has been released, and um, they obviously, you know, we've obviously been released, and I've kind of said, don't ever buy links again, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, you know, I worked with them on getting their content back and going, developing a strategy there. Um, every now and again, I still take a look at the site, and we're, we're talking almost two years now, and traffic-wise, it still hasn't really recovered in that sense. So I think there is, and who knows what, you know, Penguin, but I definitely there is, there are other things built into it. It's not a question of, right, I'll get rid of my crap links, I'll, I'll recover from it, whether it be from a recon or the next refresh. There is no quick recovery. There are things built in there which are going to say, hey, <laughs> and also bear in mind, you've removed all those crap links that were helping you in the first place. So, so it, it, it's 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 kind of a little catch twenty two. You have to replace all those crap ones over time. Um, but I think there is a trust. There's a trust thing in there um, built into it. Uh, and once you once you've you know what I mean, uh, you, you need to rebuild that up. And whether it takes a year, whether it takes two, who knows what this length of algorithmic trust is involved. Um, it may actually be. It might even say one or two of the following panda, uh, sorry, penguin refreshes. Uh, so after the next refresh, ah, you haven't gone back to your old ways, right? We restore a little bit more. Another year down the line, another refresh. It goes, ah, okay, you you haven't been up to your things. It's been a year, two years now. Now we trust you again. And see, um, I'm seeing, like your example with the manual update, I did the same thing with. Uh, when it first really launched hardcore, which was what, 2010? Um, when basically we had the first real big pan, uh, penguin update. And uh, one of, and basically one of the people I knew at the time happens to be one of the bigger distribution people of like paintball and lost, I believe, like anywhere from eight to 10,000 visitors a day, somewhere around there, uh, based off that one update. But then we couldn't figure out what would was, you know, was it actually something with the code, was it something with uh, the content, and then we caught to, uh, at the deeper I started digging into it, of course we found, okay, comment spam, article spinning, you know, everything that you could possibly imagine being done from back in the day has been done and has been consistently done. So it was a pretty big nightmare for the owner to say, okay, I've got to get rid of all this now. Um, but he knew that he needed to do it, so it's been a constant battle since he started back in 2011, or 2011 when I met him. Um, but when I went back to all of his stats, I mean, you just basically have to dive in, uh, like you said, just, you know, Tim, you meant, meant going in and saying, okay, it might not just be your links, it might be you know, something else that's causing other pieces, but what's the association level of all the updates as a whole because there's thousands of different query opportunities or uh, um, search algo opportunities that have been built in through the years. And somebody has to understand, okay, go back into history, look what happened back in maybe 2000, 2001, because that was kind of the, the big era of link buying. And I, I actually had to do it with uh, one of my employers. And I told him, I said, here's, here's what my prediction is going to be. And, you know, in 2001, he crashed. And so it's like, okay, so that told me right then and there how important are links to Google and how could somebody actually possibly spam that opportunity uh, to trick the engine. And so I think today that's kind of what we're seeing with the pandas and the penguins is just cleaning up all the mess. And if people don't go back and clean up their mess and just disavow it, it's not going to go away. You're not going to solve your problem. So great chat, Tim. Yeah, you know, I am um, a very interesting one. I I um, I was at a specific search search marketing conference for um, was it fashion or finance? 
<laughs> I can't remember. But anyway, um, we had Money Supermarket. Um, one of their head of uh, one, one of the heads of search just gave a little bit of a rundown. And um, and then what what happened was um, they got slapped to the very first penguin. And and kudos to them. You know, they were the first ones to. You know, they held up their hand and they said it publicly. Uh, However, I suppose if we had looked, you know, in SEMrush or something like that, we would have seen a dip. Now, it was only for a specific side. It was for their credit card section of their site. Um, but they they um, got slapped um, with a manual. Um, and in the time, I think it took them, I think they said it took between five and six months to obviously remove between a combination of having having links removed and disavowing the rest that they couldn't remove um, they were released from penalty but in that six months the sales they lost were in excess of a million pounds on their credit card now these guys have flipped to the other side when you lost that much um, these guys are hyper 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 um, you know, link just you know they once a week. I think they say, every Monday they basically download their latest set of incoming links from a variety of tools, webmasters, and yeah, from a variety of tools. They then manually check every single one of those pages. So uh, you know. I mean, obviously, you can check if there's a dodgy one, but they manually check every every single one of the pages within that within that seven day period that is now linking to them, and they will either approach um, the you know the, the the site and say, could you could you add a no follow? So they've got three kind of distinctions, right? Yes, you know, it's great, but you know, it's not really brilliant. Maybe they're not all. You know, it could have just come from a a mom and pop site or a little site going, hey, hey, you know, check out this new credit card rate or whatever. It's really brilliant. Whereas they'll stay, they approach them and say, listen, would you mind no following that for us? So they'll leave the link but no follow it. Or they approach and say, can you actually remove that link, please? Two, also disavowing. Every single Monday. Um, and they've got a team of three guys now just solely dedicated every week, seven days a week, tracking new links coming in, contacting, disavowing. I mean, because when they lost that much in the first update, they that you know they've they've just become sort of well, they paranoid. Paranoid. Um, yeah, and you can you can totally believe it. I mean, on the flip side of this, Penguin has opened up such a such a mass industry now in terms of negative SEO um, extortion emails like you know that one that Dan that Dan got um, just sheer extortion it's just it's unreal absolutely unreal so it's going to be really interesting penguin 3 because and I think that's part of the big problem in the in the 11 month delay it's like Yes, we we stopped devaluing links like we did in the past, like Bing and Yahoo still do, and we actually slapped a, a penalty on this time. Now, because of what we've created, the law of unintended consequences has seen negative SEO like go nuclear and sheer extortion, full out, all out blackmail, you know, openly. Um, extorting companies with negative SEO. Now they've opened up this can of worms, which they didn't foresee. So it's how they're going to put the genie back in the in the bottle now with this next update. And they've got to kind of figure out how they're going to do that, as well as still say to you know you know negative SEO and link and link building. We don't approve of it. But how are we going to deal with? So what they come up with, it's going to be a whole new little animal. This one, um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting when it when it refreshes. Uh, I mean, I hope hopefully they give us a few a few ideas on what what's going on.
But yeah, they've putting the genie back in the bottle now. Is that's what they're trying to figure out how to do? I think. I, I wonder. Um, I wonder whether um, the, the the penguin um, is, is. I mean, they just can't run it again because it's it's just become. I mean, how long has it been now? And then they're saying, it, "Look, any time now, any time now." Eleven uh, months. So yeah, you know, I, I wonder whether um, uh, the, the, when they do release penguin, it won't be the penguin that uh, will be a version no. upgrade. It'll be a whole new thing. This is going to be a whole new thing, Jim. Yeah. It's going to be as Penguin Three is not going to be as simple as as the Penguin before. I mean, it. it, it I'm assuming. <laughs> I mean, or else it wouldn't be. You know, let's say it just won't be called Penguin then. Um, it, it is going to. It's. It's obviously going to be deal deal with links. The question is, is how are they going to deal with all the other unintended consequences that they released? So negative SEO, um, you know, the disavow tool. Uh, obviously, it needs to refresh to release all the people that cleaned up their act 11 months ago and are still sitting in, in, in penguin hell. Um, so th there's a lot of things that they need to deal with which they created themselves without thinking about it. So they're going to need to deal with that. It's going to be a totally different looking animal, um, and how it uh, how it pans out, we we're just going to have to wait and see until they refresh. But the way John Mueller was talking about it today, it looks like they quite quite close to releasing it. I mean, just listening to his language, you know, it's definitely not a six months away kind of language. Uh, it could be anywhere from a couple of weeks to a month. Away, just listening to the way he was, you know, talking about when it's going to be released. So, I'm, I'm not sure if they have enough hands uh, available to, to do it. That they, Tim, aren't they still building a, a link disavow tool? <laughs> yes, mate. Yes, they are, Jim. <laughs> yeah, they're still building a disavow tool. Hey, Tim. What they? Uh, Yes, mate. The uh, the last part that I, I wanted to just mention about that uh, last example I gave uh, about the drop in uh, traffic and everything else from 2011, or sorry, yeah. 2010. This guy is coming back pretty hardcore. I mean, this is awesome to watch, and that's kind of where I got excited because I was like, okay, I, I've taken somebody from the most, one of the worst, worst ways to get hurt, uh, where he's a small biz, but he's one of the top uh, resellers in the United States. Uh, for what he does, so he does spend a lot of money on even AdWords. And so, if you want to hear something really crazy, he spent he got uh, a message from Google, and I, I think uh, Edwin, you know about this, but uh, uh, the PPC actual manual action, which for him is actually you can't sell anymore any, uh, anything else that's paintball related on your website unless it's just safety. Um, anything that shoots a projectile is now gone, so he can't even advertise on AdWords anymore based off this new policy. Kind of sucks, but you know that's you know the direction I think that a lot of things are headed, but we don't know how effective that will be even after he came out of that uh, that penguin and also panda uh, algorithm update. So once he's been, you know, he's still working on cleaning it up, but at the same time is that's kind of where I keep going back with this panda or penguin three. And you're right, I think there's going to be a lot of huge changes uh, in this integration based off of what you know the team has been saying on a lot of their hangouts uh, recently. Uh, especially John, so I'm just kind of listening to him and seeing where things are. But I'm really excited about the update. Really, talking about f um, from from AdWords and he can't advertise. Um, uh, it was quite an interesting post. Um, I don't I really, for the life of me, can't remember who it was. But she had a rant and she posted on Google Plus because it was in the um, AdWords uh, Webmaster AdWords forum. Um, the basic scenario was it was something to do with um, m uh, medical marijuana. Now she had posted in the web in the in the, in the uh, AdWords thing um, 
the company that she works with, or one of the companies she works with, they um, won't display any of the ads. But there would because it falls under some kind of guidelines, not not something to do with drugs or whatever. But that, what she was saying. That's in the new policy, actually. So that you're reading yeah, this. But what she on that, yeah. Yeah. What 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 she was saying was she pointed out quite clearly that there are actually two two companies that have got their dis their ads being displayed. Absolutely. <laughs> and then that goes my round with Walmart because they get away with it too. So you know they they can still sell paintball guns. But yeah. their, their store is not completely focused around paintball, though. Whereas, like, you know, something like me, yeah. I'm all the way around paintball, and that's all we do. Uh, and we can't even we, we can't even sell the replacement parts. That's how bad it is. But Walmart couldn't advertise on uh, uh, couldn't advertise their paintball gun. Uh, they mm -hmm. could advertise uh, for replacements or for the balls itself, or but not the gun itself, right? From what the rules are saying, yes, but uh, I believe that because they don't fall in, they don't have a ton. The majority of their products are not. Um, I mean, it's everything else. So the mix of the density level of that industry, it's kind of like going into sporting goods or anything else. Um, it's a it's a limited uh, part. I mean, even he was told by Google just make a separate site. And then do ads on that one, but you can't link to your main website. So it's all about safety gear, I think. <clears throat> you can't have any projectiles. But even in that policy, um, you can just type in Google AdWords updated policy. And they just released that last month, I believe, uh, is when we got the notification with inside of our AdWords uh, account saying our uh, account has been flagged for this update of policies that, that will affect your entire account. So I actually did a complete write-up on that on SEM, or sorry, um, uh, Barry Schwartz's uh, uh, website. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll post a link into it. But I think that it's a, it makes an interesting cause and affect what happens to other companies out there. And I think it goes right back to even what we're talking about with Penguin and also Panda. It's just cleaning up the index too. <clears throat> so. Uh, firearms and all that stuff, or even paintball guns or airsoft. I mean, that's a whole different subject. I can see that the safety pieces are in place, just like the, you know, the new policies for selling. Even I think they even have uh, under the like you mentioned medical marijuana. They have even things where you can't even sell uh, devices now. I guess so it li it lists all the things you can't do. Uh, but there's even like uh, some people I think that are going to be affected, like people that sell knives. Um, and the and irony. And the irony of it all is, is Penguin will kill you, right? Will kill your site, but you can still search link building, and they still sell ads. <laughs> or you can go over to Bing, you know, and see kind of what damage you can do over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a fun transition, guys. I, I'm looking forward to it. I want to see more of the artificial intelligence, the more machine learning algorithm opportunities so that, you know, if, if I've got a pizza restaurant or whatever and somebody happens to be in the area and basically goes, I want to eat something, what's closest to me, and bam, you know, GPS tells them exactly where they're at and tells them that, hey, there's a special going on right now. Jump in there right now and get this coupon. I mean, there's so many different opportunities of reaching your customers versus just doing links. You know, links are good and, and good quality links are fantastic. But it's only one small segment of the of the algorithm anymore. You know, it used to be a big thing. We could I mean literally we could actually go and buy, you know, a thousand dollars worth of links and we'd have plenty to be able to sprinkle out through the entire year and you know, we would outrank everybody. I mean I did it a long time ago and that's when I mentioned you know, shoot, I was actually outranking West Coast Choppers, Indian Larry, all the big motorcycle motorcycle companies in California based around links. But then what I saw was the, the, the rise and fall. And that was in the early days. And so what I've actually had to do is kind of go, okay, what what do I think about links? How if I was to get a link, you know, it's all not going to be me asking. It's going to be a natural link. You know, it just comes as a natural thing. If you've got a good related topic, people like it. 
they're engaging with it, they're going to share it. All those different things play out in the algorithm past the link. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not so um, keen to wait for our artificial intelligence. Um, but, you know, I, I'd be satisfied with just some intelligence uh, coming out of Google. You know, I mean, if they, they just, you know, wake up to the fact that um, um, having upper limit thresholds um, on links, upper limit thresholds are the problem because they allow um, a website to be vulnerable to, to the actions of a competitor. I mean, Google could fix negative SEO just right now, I mean, for years they lied about it um, and, and said it, it didn't work at all. Now they say it it, um, it could hurt you. I mean, what a what a piss weak thing to say. Uh, it could hurt you when they've known for years that it does hurt. Um, so yeah, just some basic moral judgment, just some some owning up, fessing up to. Uh, this stuff up that they've made um, with upper limit thresholds, um, and you know, finding a moral compass. You know, that, that's the thing out, out there in the desert of Burning Man. Why didn't they find a, a moral compass hanging around in the sand somewhere, and and, and uh, come back and fix this negative SEO debacle? Um, all right. Well, we move on to the next um, news item. Otherwise, we'll never finish. Okay, all right. Um, our next is um, oh, this is the lovely uh, Alita so Soilus, um, um, and um, it was a, a, a brilliant article by the inimitable uh, um, Dan Petrovic, Petrovich, sorry, um, and um, uh, it was um, curated by Mr. Edwin Yonk. Um, from a chef, <laughs> Tim Kappa, um, and titled uh, Author Rank is Dead, L Long Live Co-Occurrence. Uh, and Tim shared um, this um, uh, with an excerpt from uh, Dan's article, A Little Known Property of Google Books Search uh, Highlights Co-Occurrence as a Ranking Signal. And... Um, <laughs> He said, see for yourself. Um, I still haven't worked out why uh, Dan used uh, Alita's uh, photo for this article instead of yours, Tim. Uh, because, Jim, it's ladies first. She was mentioned first, and her image shows up. <laughs> if I wanted to, I could have shared my image. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, actually, you know, when Dan when Dan asked me, uh, he sent me, <clears throat> he pinged me initially and said, and said, um, you know, have, can you have your thoughts on this? And basically, it's in Google Books, and if you search, obviously, your name in in titles um, uh, to see what the co-occurrence is. And it was really interesting for my part. Um, the weird thing is, is on Dan's, Rand's, Letha's, all of them were very much in line with what they're doing now and what they've authored or mine, nothing from any recent or and when I say recent, in the last 20 years, all the stuff that was there was from over 20 years ago. All, 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 <laughs> all so yeah, obviously um, Google Books and, and co-occurrence doesn't really find my the last 20 years of my life very interesting, which is a shame. <laughs> well, we, we, we find it interesting, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jim. <laughs> oh, okay, so David Amelin came up for mine. Okay, now that's cool. I feel a bit better. <laughs> Yeah, most of my stuff was from tw 20 years ago. Because Dan initially said, he, he emailed and went, um, do you like cooking or something? <laughs> and I was like, well, yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, any more on, on, on um, Dan Petrovic's find? I, I love um, Dan's, Dan's work. And, you know, it, it, um, uh, he, he has an insatiable curiosity, um, but also uh, he, he just doesn't act on hunches. Uh, he, um, um, he uses a scientific approach, and, and uh, you, know, you know, for that, um, the entire uh, SEO industry should be uh, eternally grateful. Um, any comments? Well, reluctantly, we'll, we'll move on from uh, the lovely uh, Aleda so Soilus. Um, and this one um, was posted by Mr. Yonk also. Uh, it was an article from Dwayne Forrester. He's the, the uh, senior um, product manager at Bing and looks after uh, uh, Bing Webmaster Tools and writes the uh, Bing Webmaster blog. Um, and um, um, will I read that out or will somebody else um, um, speak to it? It's titled URL Keyword Stuffing, Spam Filtering. Um, oh, look, uh, I, 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 I can add a quick confession to it. Uh, we run a site um, called, uh, well, it's, it's URL is, is australia.shopsafe.com.au. And um, when um, this URL um, structure was designed, uh, it was back in 2006. And uh, at that time, the plan was to make uh, um, interesting URLs uh, and, and have, have them uh, being able to drill down um, say by location or drill down by type of venue, um, you know whether it be caravan park or, or apartment house or whatever. Um, and that, anyway, that was the plan. But looking back on it, I, I, I think we really did overcook the omelette. Um, and uh, you know, so now we have a whole set of literally you know, tens of thousands of URLs which are perhaps uh, considered as spam. Um, and in those days, uh, um, they weren't spam because the uh, URL was, uh, it wasn't as, as, as critical a, a factor in those days. It, it wasn't such a big deal. That, but um, these days, of course, uh, the URL is um, um, very influential. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's my confession. Um, what, what's your confession, Tim? I don't have any, Jim. <laughs> Fair enough. I think I can jump in on this one. I, I used to do a lot of the siloing way back in the day. I still do siloing, but not as aggressive as I did in the past. Uh, with all the different keywords, I mean, for a while, depending on how you wrote it, if it was from coming from a content management system, you'd have this like gigantic long URL uh, with a bunch of strings with hyphenated uh, you know, keywords and, and everything else. But uh, you see that still happening today, but it's not as aggressive. It's basically just kind of like letting people know where you're at. If it's a local, you know, it's local slash you know Kansas City, or uh, maybe it's uh, forward slash products, and then you have drill down into what the products are. But you know, being able to to stuff the keywords, that's definitely been a dead thing for a very long time, but people still do it today. So I think that Microsoft, or sorry, Bing actually addressing that uh, is, is a fantastic thing that they've done because it just needs to get a lot of this old stuff out of the you know, people's heads when they're jumping into SEO for the first time. They're, they're reading these articles and they're that you know, wow, I got to do that, I got to do this, and they're going down the wrong rabbit hole. Okay, so um, will we uh, move on from Dwayne Forrester's article? Well, um, I'd like to get one. Uh, in the section uh, uh, on how, uh, how do we uh, detect it, um, 
they do say they look at uh, uh, pivots uh, such as domain and owner. So are they looking at who is data? That's strongly suggested, no? Well, they're going to look at the who has data on everybody's profile. They've kind of shown that one with semantic search, and they're also with the registrar, or registrar uh, piece of Google way back in the day, uh, identifying cross patterns between multiple sites, just trying to actually rank for affiliate type stuff. Uh, you know, we can see that all the way back into the payday loan algorithm update, as well as you know even further uh, with the Panda, you know, the first uh, launch of it all the way to the the bigger launches throughout the days or throughout the months um, or years, either way you want to look at it, it's still getting aggressive, and I think that uh, we'll, we'll slowly see that that kind of fade away, but uh, it's going to still take time. Yeah. All right. Um, look, the the twenty um, seventh item on our run list. Uh, is Google's reply uh, to EMMA. Um, I suppose we should have combined this at the start um, with um, our first um, quest, uh, our first news item, uh, which was uh, uh, the EMMA uh, their response uh, to Google's antitrust uh, proposal. Or am I missing something here, uh, Edwin? Uh, no, no. What the article from Eric Smith is, is, is really, it's bad. Everybody's singing hallelujah, but uh, I'm, I'm not seeing that. So. Uh, for example, he says um, uh, in his arguments uh, that less than 15% comes from uh, Google. Uh, I think he's uh, talking about the New York Times, uh, well, if that is the case, well, you can turn that around uh, 180 degrees and you have an argument for the publishers, no? So that, that's, that's not really an argument he's making there. Um, uh, he also says that uh, the most downloaded app in Europe is not Google, it's Facebook Messenger. Uh, well, on Android, uh, most Google apps are auto-installed, so that's not really a download. And uh, Facebook Messenger uh, is uh, skewed because uh, within the Facebook app, you're forced, if you want to use uh, uh, Facebook chat, you're forced to use Facebook man uh, Messenger. That's why uh, Facebook Messenger has uh, so many downloads. So I don't... If, if he makes that those, all those mistakes, then you, you cannot take it serious, can you? Well, well, I don't, I don't know. Um, you know, I mean, just simply saying that you know, we we built um, Google for users, not websites. Again, it's hubris. You know, and I mean, and while they're on top, um, they're um, they're. they're Quite justified in in, in uh, allowing themselves to to uh, um, you know uh, exhibit hubris, but uh, nemesis follows uh, hubris, and um, you know won't they come a big fall um, if if they do? I mean, who knows? I mean, this this has never happened in the history of the human race, and uh, I don't know uh, um, whether that. You know, it, it's um, now that the horse is um, um, bolting down the road um, and, you know, probably dangerously, um, I, I don't know if it can uh, be re reeled in. Um, but maybe it can. Maybe it may. Well, who knows? I, I don't. So, Jim, with this message, though, if you kind of look back in the history, all the way back to even Matt Cutts' days as Google guy in Webmaster World. Um, way back in the day, I think he got it on the forums, what, 2003, 2005, when he released his name at Matt Cutts. He's been speaking at conferences off, 
all over the place and, and really kind of pushing this message before this actually came out officially like this. But it's been talked about for many years, and he's, talked, he's warned webmasters about all the different things that are in, in happening now that if you go back into some of those videos, you'll see him saying that as well as PubCon and SMX and all the other areas that he's spoken at, but he's always come up to the same thing. It's, you know, Google's there for users, and we've seen that as they've reorganized their, you know, interface, they've added quick cards, the, the quick boxes, uh, simple stuff like that the user wants. Now, they're pulling that information from multiple sources, and that website, you know, is going to be either trusted or not trusted, and that, that's going to be determined on many different ranking algorithm pieces, but it still goes back to, if you... If Google sends traffic to your website, and we can see that through Webmaster Tools, if they send you the traffic and for, you know, maybe a, a thousand inquiry or uh, impressions and then maybe like, you know, uh, you know, a handful of clicks, and then all of a sudden, you know, back in your analytics reports, when they when you look, start looking at their bounce rates and their user experience, they didn't stick around. Well, if they didn't stick around, then obviously something was... You know, not correct for the user. So, how do you go back and learn from that information and check out that bounce from what just happened to go? Okay, how do I correct this so the user experience is much better and Google will still give me the the possible impressions because it's always learning. If you look at your Webmaster Tools query report, it's always picking up new words that may not even be pertain to your website, but it's trying something new. And it's going to throw impressions at it, and then if it doesn't like what it finds. You know, the, the user's not going to find, you know, they're not going to have the experience that you want them to have in the first place. Therefore, you're not going to get the sales that you're really wanting out of your website. So I think it's important to go back and look at what this message really means and look at, you know, not as a negative towards Google, but an opportunity that Google has basically been teaching us for many years to say, make it for the users, because that's their focus. You know, if they have only 10 results and then the paid advertisements, and, you know, we paid advertisements, the, you know, bad ads are still in there somewhere, but they are filtered out a lot better uh, than before, and then we're seeing the same thing with the algorithmic search change, and, uh, you know, the, the landscape is a little different, but that's going to be, if you go, again, way back to even, like, the beginning of Google+, uh, you know, what did Google+, Plus look like before it turned out to what we're actually talking about today? You know, a historical thing that Google does and most of it's on the fly. It's like you know, changing a, uh, a bus like 65 miles an hour down the highway and then saying, I've got to change the tires and give it an oil change without stopping and hurting anybody on the bus. I mean, they're, they're rolling out algorithms that basically affect the entire bus and everybody aboard. And, you know, some of those websites that are, you know, I think uh, Tim brought this up, but, you know, it's, it's going back to, uh, you know, trust. It, it's the content. It's how it's been built. If it's archaic, you know, and, and you've got things that say no index, no follow areas, and you know, it, there's a whole bunch of other elements that need to be played out than just uh, saying they're not going to rank my website because they don't care about that. They do. I think they care about the content that you guys are providing, and, and uh, it just needs to be able for the spider to really grab it right, I guess, you know? And in the experience, go back into your bounce rates, look at your visitor flow, look at all the things that Google already gives you. And now they've got some new beta reports that just came out to show even more detail. That's my take. Okay, anybody else? All right. Um, well, look. Uh, 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 let's go to green room now. We still have a um, a viewer. Um, thing we, we had had uh, viewers all the way through uh, tonight. Um, thank you very much. Uh, your uh, interest in what we do uh, makes what we do uh, um, worth doing. And um, we'll be back uh, at the same time next week to do it all again. Um, I wish you a, a happy and joyous um, weekend and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much.